Hi everyone and welcome to the Emergence Investment Conference. I'm joined today with uh, Patrick William, the managing director at Rickson Capital. Patrick, thank you for being here today. Yeah, good to be here with them. Thank you. Now Patrick, your journey in the investment world is very impressive from managing high yield SME private credit strategies to handling substantial M&A deals. So can you share with our audience what inspired you to focus on the underbank niche within the SME space with Rickson Capital? Yeah, so what we observed was um, with a lot of fund managers, you want they want to write big checks to get to a very big fund, which generates very large management fees. Uh, so all the new fund entrants had that same target niche, big, big checks. So what we observed was the more checks you have, well, it's not observed, it's pretty common sense. The more checks you have competing for capital or competing for business, the returns go down. So we decided we'd pick a niche that was genuinely underbanked. So when someone wants a term sheet, it's just ours, which means we can set the price, which means we provide the borrower the solution they never had before, which is very helpful, but we extract a return that is extraordinary for a very, very well-managed level of risk. So it's a great proposition for our investors. Amazing. That's wonderful, Patrick. Now, um, could you provide some insights into the current trends that you're observing within the private credit fund and property investment landscape, particularly concerning risk management and yield optimization? Yeah, look, that's a very topical question. We just talked about that on the panel. Um, with the pro proliferation of private credit funds, because it is a great space, there's plenty of opportunity. What's happened in the last 12 to 18 months is because there's so many new entrants, returns at the big end of town have begun to be driven down. So for the, for the larger funds, they're in a very difficult spot because they're used to delivering very high returns for this level of risk. But with competition, they now have got a choice. Do, you keep, do I keep my level of risk here and have my returns slowly go down? Or do I start writing risky and risky loans and keep my returns flat? Uh, so my advice to a lot of investors is read the information memorandum uh, because that will give you the rules and the guidelines for what the fund can or can't do. So to use a Rickson example, we're a very prescriptive fund. So it's very clear. All we can do is first ranking, senior secured asset back loans of two to $20 million. It's really as simple as that. So if you invest in the fund and stop following us, you've got comfort that whatever we do fits that criteria. So you know what the risk profile is. Amazing. Very insightful, Patrick. Now, given the unique approach of the Rickson Income Fund, emphasizing capital preservation and monthly income with a target return of 10 to 12 percent per annum, how do you maintain such a balance between yield and risk in today's dynamic economic environment? Yeah, I think being in that underserviced space has really, really worked for us. Uh, so by staying in our lane, writing those smaller checks, uh, you know, we talk to the bigger funds and they tell us, look, your returns are good, your security is good, but all you're doing is $2 million. I make that in fees. So there is an acknowledgement, but we're actually quite happy to be in our space because we don't have that competition. We can continue to extract those really good returns. But what's particularly appealing for our retired investors there's always some returns are returns. It always You have to look at what the risk is. All our loans are senior secured and all our loans are collateralized, completely asset backed. So the proposition is, as a debt investor, there's no upside for you. If things go well, you get your interest. If things go bad, what happens? With us, we can step in. We are registered over equipment, plant property or receivables. We will put our hands on it because we're registered over it and we'll get our money back. So there's downside protection in bad times and in good times, a very healthy yield. That's truly wonderful, Patrick. Now, um, there's a crucial aspect to consider, especially in the current market conditions. So with your experience, how do you navigate regulatory challenges and market fluctuations while ensuring consistent returns for investors in the private credit sector? Yeah, look, we're very fortunate. Private credit is a very boring space. Uh, so the regulatory environment isn't onerous. You know, the rules are very clear. Uh, it's built into our information memorandum. So the guidelines are there you know, uh, in terms of investor dis disclosures, KYC or new investors and borrowers. Uh, but that said, we have a specialist law firm retained. So every three months, they help us with the Austrac and ASIC obligations to make sure we're on track. But really, ASIC uh, is quite good with dealing with wholesale funds. Um, and in terms of fluctuations and variability, because we're in the private capital space, we don't get to, we, you know, we don't have price fluctuations, number one. But even if we were required to mark to market, again, all our loans are asset backed and all our interest rates are floating rate. So if rates go up, uh, the value of our loans don't go down because the pricing goes up. 
and rates come down, the value of our loans don't go up because our rates come down as well. Uh, so it's a very, very stable asset class. Amazing. That's wonderful, Patrick. Now, as a seasoned professional in the investment realm, what advice would you offer to emerging fund managers or startups that are looking to attract capital, especially in niche markets like the one Rickson Capital operates in? Yeah, I think the first advice would be don't come in our niche. <laughs> That's ours. Um, uh, I think the point of differentiation that really helped us grow because we're, you know, we're, we've got an 18 month track record as opposed to five years is we had something different to offer. Because when we sat down with investors and fund and, and wealth managers, first question they, or the first comment they'd make is like, look, your returns are 10 to 12. There are six funds that do that that have been around for several years. Why you? And we were able to sit down and articulate why our strategy was different and why for that same return, our risk was superior. Uh, and that's how you attract capital because then they go, look, this sounds quite interesting. I'll give you a small allocation and see how you go. And of course, you know, we're, we're proud of how we've performed. We pay 0.92 to 1% every month. Two to three months in, suddenly the checks start coming in. And that's really helped drive uh, uh, farm growth. Amazing. That's very well said, Patrick. Now, uh, being here today at the Emergence Investment Conference as one of our panelists, uh, any key takeaways that you have that you could share with the audience and how has the experience been for you at the event today? Yeah, it looks a cracking event. I've known Steve for a long time. The Wholesale Investor event is uh, it's iconic in uh, the Sydney and Melbourne investment scene. Look, very, very enjoyable. Very, very enjoyable. You know, uh, it's, quite, it's, it's quite inspiring. You walk around, you meet all these people, these boots, and you think, there's, there's one, there should be one or two unicorns here. So you're nice to everyone because you want them to remember you when they're rich and hopefully put an allocation in our fund. <laughs> Amazing. Very well said again, Patrick. But thank you so much for joining me in this discussion and sharing your wonderful insights. And to our viewers, thank you so much for tuning in. I look forward to seeing you all in my next interview. Thanks, Patrick. Thank you. Rhythm. <laughs>